Alessandro Michi, and he talked about solving the most popular code shortening competition with Python 3. Oh. So I am Alessandro Michi. Uh, I work for uh, Bopen as a day job. Uh, it's a company uh, that writes software, mostly in Python, uh, that has to do with uh, uh, environmental environment monitoring, with satellites, climate, very interesting stuff. But since I usually like programming, also as a hobby, uh, I ended up doing a few uh, competitions. Uh, programming competitions. By the way, today there is the uh, qualification for the code jam, if you don't know. And so as soon as I finished, I'll go <laughs> and try to, to qualify. Uh, this one was by far the most intense competition I did. And it's so crazy that uh, I really like to, to share it. So first, one of the most important things that I learned as I prepared the topic is that if you say that you are going to frighten in depths of the Python language and do mind-blowing freaks uh, and to show the most obfuscated, contrived Python code you, you have ever seen, people have expectations and so it's better to use less uh, I mean, robot style when you do. Let, let's see what we can do. I mean, uh, we'll try. We we'll try. So, what what we are talking about? Uh, coding competitions usually are hosted by websites. The, this one is hosted by Spoj, the Sphere, the Sphere Online Judge, and it's a, a quite an old uh, site where you get coding competition, you can compete in a lot of languages, there are 20,000 and plus problems, and a lot of users. The, the interesting part is that the fact that the user score are public, so you see how much you and other competitors uh, performed, uh, how you performed, and there are ranks for every problem you have a ranking, but solutions are not public. So this is uh, different from other competitions where there are they are in a short time frame, and after the competition ends, you can look at the solutions of, of others, and you can learn from that. In, in this case, no. You see a solution, you see that it's better than yours, and, but you don't have any idea how they did it, and there's no way to, do, to, to know it unless you find the, the guy who actually did it and ask him how you did it. But this, the advantage is that you can compete at any time. So, uh, you can just go there, browse the, the problems, look for problems that fits you, and try to solve them. Sidescon is just one of the 20,000 problems. It's slightly unusual. It's, uh, the, most of the, pro the problem is just if you can solve it or not, and if you can solve it within a certain time, that is, run time. Uh, in this case, instead, the, the, the challenge is to get the code as short as possible. This is usually called code golf. It means that every Code, every uh, characters that you put in the source code of your solution is a penalty. And the one who wins, or uh, who scores best, is the, the person who has the less penalty. In this case, it's slightly unusual, we will see. Now, the, the, the nice part is that it has, it has been created in 2005. It's really trivial. Now we'll see the, the text. But uh, it's one of the most popular. I mean, there are 8,000 people who tried it in all languages. So. And there are more than a thousand uh, people participate with just Python. And one of the very best solutions, which is not in Python but in Perl, is, is uh, written by P Tim Peders. Those who don't know, it's one of the I mean very old uh, people in ca in Python who is still very relevant today. So it's one Python guy who actually used Perl to to succeed. But you know code golf, I mean, and Perl, it's, it, it works much better than Python. So, the problem. The problem statement is, uh, I mean, even quite strange, written in quite strange, very short, and the problem itself, it's trivial. It's given a set of integers, find the sum of all positive integers in it. The, the catch is that the score 
equals the size of the code. This is typical code goals, so the size of the coding characters of your program, except symbols with ASCII code less or equal to 32. Now, this is usually, uh, it, it's not done like this. This is something like, okay, you can use as many spaces as you want. You know, in Python, uh, you have uh, significant spaces, so why would you count spaces or carriage return as, uh, as, uh, as penalty? So just keep it. But this also opens the possibility to do something really crazy. I mean, you have, for free, you can add a lot of code, just it, it, you cannot see it, or a lot of text inside your program. Anyway, the, then you have an example, an input, and an output. So you know how to test your program, you try it, you see if the, that input, with that input you get the, say, the correct output, you just, just to read how you read it, this, the first number, T is the number of numbers you have to count, so it's four. And then the following lines, you have just to sum five. This is negative, so you don't count. Six, so you do five plus six, and minus one, you don't count. So the correct answer is 11. Just trivial. So the reason I'm here talking about that is that uh, I own the uh, submitted the shortest uh, solution in Python 3. Uh, same, uh, same penalty as uh, Halvard Norenbo, who is a very good code shorter. If you go around and you try to see what, what this strange sport, you will find him quite a lot, and he's very good. And it's a real pleasure for me that I'm more, much more of an amateur to be uh, in the first spot with him. And the, the, what is, was really strange is that it took us nine years, or it took somebody nine years to find it, because the code uh, was uh, created, the, the, the problem was created in uh, 2005, and for nine years, the, the best solution in Python was in Python 2, and it was 29 characters. And basically, within two weeks, both Harvard and myself managed to find the 28 solution in Python 2. And using the same trick, you get the 31 solution in Python 3. So that was very strange. I mean, just by a couple of weeks and after nine years. So what is the Python Golf master plan? So the, you want to, to participate to one of these uh, competitions, what do you do? First, you read the statement, and you need to uh, write a reference solution, which means you are looking for correctness. Uh, and you say, okay, I can solve the problem. This is usually, you're not trying to short, to make anything short, just to make it correct. Then, uh, you may look for alternative algorithms. Usually, when you start, uh, the, the, the trick here is not to be efficient, it's not to be uh, fast, it's to be to you to use the least number of uh, of characters and this changes completely the way you think to to problems. I mean usually you're trained to try to be smart about performance. In this case the performance that you're trying to optimize is completely crazy. So you don't look for uh, for special cases and uh, you may actually decide to cycle through thousand times the same line of code, uh, the same uh, list if it's needed, if it just gets you one line shorter, no problem. I mean, there, are, there is a lot of uh, space where you can get crazy algorithms, and so this is one of the things. And here you need, I mean, the, the, the quality that you need is some algorithmic wizardry, that you, and you better try everything. Then you look for shortened so solutions. It means, okay, now you know that a lot of, you have a lot of ways to solve the problem, and then you try to uh, look for language features or tricks or anything that will make the, the solution shorter. And usually, I mean, for more complex uh, problems, this is very easy, but for other problems, sometimes if you get one piece of the algorithm will help you shorten in a certain way, but then uh, if you try with the different algorithms, you can use completely different uh, shortening tricks, uh, and it gets, you have to try and try and try, and it's, 
some, something like an NP-complete problem, because every time you change something, you have to redo the whole thinking again. So <clears throat> let's start it. Uh, let's try the reference solutions. The algorithm, it's just trivial. So this is something that everybody can do. And our reference solutions right now, solution will look like something like this. This is absolutely no, no, not short net. So I read, oh, by the way, in, uh, for, uh, in SPOJ, in the Sphere Online Judge, uh, you are passed the input as input in the standard input of your program, and you need to print uh, the solution. So the input, this is Python 3, so input reads a string, a line string, uh, a line from the input, then I cast it to an int, and this is t. Then I initialize my result variable. I range in t so that I count every line. I, I count n lines. This is the number of lines that I need to include. And for every line, I read the number. I cast into an int. If it's uh, bigger than 0, I add it to result. And then I, uh, I print the result. Very nice. Now, this print scores. It's a function you don't, know, you don't want to see how it looks like. And it does, I mean, all the things that should be done by SPOJ. It means that it gets the, the previous section. It runs to the a test case. If it, fa if it fails, it tells you that it's a wrong answer. If it's correct, so the output is what the algorithm expects, it gives you the side scone score, which is the length of the of basically this string except spaces and carriage returns and then it gives the the golf score which is what would have been w without that crazy trick of the uh, ascii 32 very nice so this is the first thing it works so we understood the the the, the what the algorithm should look like actually you can use this and post it to to SPOJ, SPOJ runs your solutions, and since they're using uh, much more complex uh, uh, test files, so you can be sure that it, if it works or not. Very well. Let's go back here. Now, can we do anything about the algorithms? Well, I mean, if you just forget the very fine prints, uh, you cannot do much. I mean, you're just to, you need to read numbers, Decide if they are uh, uh, positive or negative, and then uh, sum them. I mean, there's not much to see here. So let's try to shorten the solution. We need to practice a little bit of code shortening. Oh, sorry. And this is here. So let's start with, if we start from here, let, let's see what we can do. This is, we start very easy. This is something it's easy to optimize. For example, I can just take this and move it here. And I spur from 64, I go to 61. OK, I spurred 3. Then I notice that here I need to read a variable, check the variable, sum the variable. Somehow there, are, there is easy, an, an easier way to uh, to just some uh, positive numbers, you need don't you cannot you don't need to test. Actually, it took me quite a long time to figure this out, but let's assume that it's easy. Uh, you can actually use max. If you do max zero and int, you can just do this because if it's negative it goes to zero. Now, you don't need n. If you go here, it's 62, OK, because I added uh, some code. But then I can remove n. And I can just move it here. And now I get 59. <laughs> OK. Now, if you look at the solution in Python, this is the actual page. You, we have quite a big batch 
that are around 40. Now here it's still very easy. Now probably something around here it's something that if you spend a lot of, uh, enough time you can manage. What else can we do from here? Any suggestion? Yep. Almost, you cannot replace both, but you can replace in one input. Actually, this is very nice. The, you need to know how to play this game because this is one of the three. <laughs> okay. So, this is something that, I mean, you can learn. There are uh, resources on the internet that, that tells you a lot of tricks. And one of the very nice tricks is that if you write input here, i equal to input, you can just write i here. And I here. Oh. Sorry? Sorry. Yes, I usually do like this. And you see, wrong answer, so it was working. And it's 58. We shaved one character. Now you cannot imagine how hard it can be to get one character less. This is. No, but we can do still something quite easily. Sorry? No, they're not counted. But, 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 you know, you don't need the error equal to zero and explicit sum. You just, you may. Sorry? No, because you need the R. You need to sum them. So one of the things that you can do is R equal. I do mind. Okay. Yep. Now we have this nice thing of list comprehensions, and we can just sum here. And we remove this. We remove this, and we have fifty-eight. But then we don't need R, so we are getting somewhere. Yeah, you're right. Oh, what do you mean again? Fifty-eight. Come on. 55, okay, sorry. Okay, now, what are we left now? Sorry? No, it doesn't work. Unfortunately, it works only if it's five characters or, or, uh, or more. So right now there is one, now we start to use real tricks. Now, in, this is well known, in uh, code shortening, and it's you don't need to print stuff to get them out. You may input stuff to get them out. What? If you do input something, the the argument is printed before it gets the input in. So, actually, if you write input here, it works. And since input is already Map to i, I use i. Woohoo! Well, now we start. But now we start to to look. I mean, these start to look obfuscated. But we can do much better. So now the 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 the, the most characters I use for the uh, for the loop. How do we get? How do we loop with less characters? Now, this is uh, an advanced topic in code golf. So I don't expect many of you to know. But you can use the, the following trick. If you have a string with the, the thing you want to loop, and you repeat the string with the uh, multiplication, and then you evaluate the result, you get basically a for loop. But with less characters. Or, let's see, the idea is to use eval here, and then to have something like here, and then to have multiplication here, and now we need to get the current number of, uh, let's try it, eval, maybe, yeah. Woohoo! 
what the heck is happening? So you have this string here. It's max of zero. Now let's start to compact things. And you, I multiply it for the int of an input. So uh, let's help you like this. So the first thing that happens here is that I read the first, the first character in the input file, which is the four, how many times I have to repeat. And then I multiply this. This actually becomes, you, we, can, uh, we can see it. This becomes something like times four. And now if you evaluate, it, it's the maximum of all the, the next inputs. So the, the other inputs is done inside the string, inside the val, inside the string. That works. Can we do something better? Now, if you want, you can see it. It's hard. Now, we have the Actually, you can see it too much. <laughs> so now uh, the val is needed for the four, and the int uh, is needed. And but 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 the sum. Is there any other way we can sum? How do we sum? View plus inside the val. So instead of uh, producing a tuple with the eval, we remove this. We are, so this is not a tuple anymore. But we put a plus here. Plus is very nice because it's a, a, a binary operator, but also a unary operator. So even if the first max has a plus in front of it, but there's no problem because it, it just get, it's useless. So now we have to fix somewhere here the number of things and 43. Now, this is actually the shortest solution that I could my write myself. It's 43 characters. And it is um, pretty obfuscated. I mean, I hope you don't program like this uh, in your code. Sure. Um, I mean, there are a lot of tricks. You can get some, something on the internet to learn this trick. I guess it is possible to make it shorter. I couldn't find uh, a way, but one of the reasons is that I tried a different route, uh, which, proved, which, which proved much better. So then I, I stopped uh, trying. So if you want, as a side project, you can try to make it even shorter. Now. The problem with all of this is that this is really child's play. So up to now it was, yeah. We put some alternative algorithms under the rack. And we have a whole, the possibility to use as many ASCII characters below 32 as we want. These are the ASCII characters until here. It's space and then all these. It's unit separator, regular separator. Uh, shift out, uh, form feed, uh, vertical tab, etc. Now, in line, inside Python code, some of those are legal. It's horizontal tab, carriage return, and space. Do you think we can do something with those? Something to actually do something useful with the code. I didn't find any way. So if you find, you are, I'm impressed. But they're all spaces, so it's not much that you, that you can really do. But still, the same stuff can be used as special characters inside literal string. They are legal inside literal string. So you can actually write those inside the string literal, and the uh, Python compiler will not, uh, will not complain. Actually, not all of them are legal, for example, null, Line feed, carriage return are not legal because carriage return is the carriage return. And then uh, line feed as well and, and null. So, so you can use a lot of them. Now, we can fit a big string with invisible characters inside our program. And then, so 
the idea is I need to find this string with a lot of special character, and then I need to find a way to use that string to make it into source code, and then I can, I won't like to use that source code, I want to run that source code. Let's start with the first. How do we turn a string into another string? A, a string of arbitrary length into something that it's a string that we can use as code. Or, okay, no, first, let's start from number three. How do you run code? Eval, exec. Yeah, exact source code. You, if you have a string, a source code string, you can uh, execute it. Now, uh, how, what we are looking for is to find a way to write a string with very few characters that transforms a, a kind of an ex, in, encrypted source code, encrypted in ASCII special characters, and translate it to a real string uh, with a string with actual uh, code in it, and then we want to, to execute that, exec that string. So in order to do this, obviously, we need a, an encrypt function that is able to produce the uh, decided encrypted source code, I mean, encry encrypted message so that we can get the, the, from the code that we, that we give. Okay, what we want is some, something that transform, a, that get a string as input and that uh, it outputs Python code and it must be as short as possible because we need to write that inside our program. So I accept a, a suggestion. What can we use? In Python 3, there are actually two, two candidates. Obviously, you cannot import because import something is already wasting a lot of uh, stuff, so it's in the standard library, or it's bytes. Bytes, it's one. Unfortunately, it's not the one we are we will talk about. There is some a very elegant solution with bytes, lovely, but uh, we are not going to talk about that because it you cannot do the final three byte three characters. Other suggestion? Sorry. I click. No takers. Translate. Translate is inside the standard library because it's a method of a string, and it converts every character of a string with the character that is in the table. Now, if you put, the, the table needs to be 256 character long, but it's not a problem because you can put it with a lot of uh, uh, blank and with not count, we just need to the very, if you can make the translation table small, you are fine, you are golden actually. So this is the idea. Our decryption function is just to write the code here, then translate with the appropriate decryption table, and we want these to be complete, or at least mostly special character, and these to be mostly special characters, so the total number of characters, it's, it's small. So let's, let's see how it works. Now, how do you build the, uh, the um, decrypt table? Now, there are a lot of uh, small details you need to avoid. Uh, you cannot translate, you cannot use 0, na, uh, 10, and 13, so you need to skip that, but it's pretty easy. If you have a solution, if you put the source code here, you look for uh, uh, the, get the different uh, characters of your source code, then you find a translation, and then you build the encrypted source code and the table. This works pretty well. For example, I get the previous solution here, and I encrypt it, so I get the encrypt code and the encrypt table. This is the encrypted code. Woohoo! So this is, if we try to print it, we don't see anything because they are all non-visible characters, and this is the decrypt table. These are all the letters that are used here, and they're put in a way in, in the place that the decryption table matches this encryption, and if you apply it, you get the, your value. You get your, in, uh, uh, your string, the string that you wanted to exec. So 
The encrypted source code has a score of zero and the table is the one who is giving you the score. It's 20. So since this is a typical solution. So here actually it's much bigger than this. You cannot see it because there is a line feed or whatever that makes uh, uh, NumPy com uh, confused. But then you have translate and then this. Wow. Now things are starting to be really obfuscated. And this is 42. Not bad. Not bad, but still, we just didn't try, we didn't try anything. Oh, by the way, this 42, it's interesting to see how it works. Basically, the exec translate, this is the machinery. This is something that we need to use. Huh? We cannot skip, for, to my knowledge, any character of this. It's uh, um, uh, about 22. The decrypt table, it's around 20. And then the encrypted, uh, the encrypted source code is zero. So um, right now, what we can do is to get a smaller decryption table. For example, here you have, I have uh, the equal and the column are just here because I use a random, uh, a random solution. But now I don't need to have a few characters here. I need to have a few different characters. So I can remove this. I actually write input in extended. And I get 40 characters. This is the same solution as before. I just expanded input. I don't need to try to get a few characters. And again, if you want to see the solution, it's lots of stuff that you don't see. And translate, and now the translate is smaller. Very nice. So. Right now, we have found our first level machinery, and we are now facing a different problem. The problem is, how can I write stuff with as least less uh, number of code? The, the different letters and characters are po as, po as possible. This is a, a, something like a, a variation of the sites of the sites con program. I call it sites two problem, and let's see what we can do. So we started from here. Now I have this print score two. It's a function that tells you how long this is. So this is long 18. There are 18 different characters here. And so I expect the final solution to be around 40. Does it work? Yes. Now what do you want? Now you need to look for a way to express the same uh, algorithm with more uh, with, with different language features so for example here you you throw away the, the 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 string evaluation that was useful before you get back to the sum and then you sum and you get a lot of uh, uh, not easy to explain i don't even remember exactly what they do but you can always check if it works it works it's now we are using just 14 different characters because we don't use the plus, we don't use the M anymore. And then I managed to reach here. I think this is again quite obfuscated. And I managed so to, exp uh, to express this algorithm with 13 characters, which means that the sites gone score, once you plug these 13 characters into the, the decryption table, it will give you a total of 35. Just double check it. This is the machinery source code. The source code is encrypted. I get encrypted source code, the decryption table. I create the solution and then 35. Very nice. And look now, the golf score is 367. Yeah. So I'm now using quite heavily the fact that I don't pay, I don't get penalty for characters, but just for that kind of characters. And I'm using it a lot more and more and more. So this is how the solution looks like. As always here, you have a lot of characters that you don't see and they play tricks with, uh, with uh, Python, but this is the important thing. This is all the characters that we used. Very nice. Uh, this is the complete solution if you also want to see the, the internal stuff. 
Now, can we do much better than this? Now, the sort, now I pass through the source code through counter and then item sorted. So these are the how many times, in my solution, how many times every letter is used. So I see that maybe I can try to remove the F, but F is for four. It's not that easy, and then, but then I would get also, I, if I can remove the, the four loops, I mean, somewhere here there are a couple of four loops. One is here, one is here. It's, I spent quite a lot of time. I think that was the best I could do, at least in Python 2. With Python 3, I don't know if there are even more crazy things. But then I say, okay, this is going to be 35. But someone had this. Uh, but uh, the, in Python 2, they had smaller solutions. Applying the same uh, machinery to Python 2, I could see other people had smaller solutions than this. So I spent still some time. And I started to think, uh, how can you express an algorithm with even less different characters? And now, in order to get beyond that, we really need to go quite deep into the, the language. Now we are really on the edge of the abyss. So the things you are going to see are not being cannot be unseen. So if you're afraid, just leave now. Now we, the, the, the trick has been to use an exec of a string. And right now, the way to go forward is to go downward. What if the string that we want to exec actually is an exec? If I have a string, not right now this is the, the solution that I want to encode, is there a way to encode that in even less characters? After a lot of, de of deliberation and a lot of sleepless night, uh, I noticed this, that if I want to write i, I can use this. Obviously, if I want to write any other letter, I can just need to change this. But you are not getting a lot because the numbers are still a lot. But what is a way to get, to build all the numbers with just as little characters as possible? Binary, but binary you need B, and binary you need zero, and you need one, and then you need to sum the. Sorry? Yes! One plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. And the advantage is that now you already are using one, so you can chain it with the next stuff with just the plus. You're already using the plus, so you get this. Very nice. So, the trick now is to get this number encrypt, which takes the a source code and transform it into a composition of strings that uh, of C strings uh, summed of one plus one plus one plus one. Now let's see how it works. Uh, if I, now this, the, also the, this is really it's really ugly, but it works and. I forgot how I did it, so I had to redo it again yesterday two at night, and it was really quite something. So this is print. Can you see it? Very nice. Is it really print? Just check. Sorry, it's exec. Uh, no, what was it? I don't remember. Eval, yeah, right. Yes, it is. So, right now here I'm using percent and um, C. C I'm already using because I'm doing exec, so it works. One and plus and parentheses I'm already using because I want to do an exec. So, what 
I'm going to do is to get this inside the number encrypt, then put this inside in, in exec, and then encode that. And this is the, the, the solution that I want to push into the other encryption uh, algorithm. So I only have, I'm only uh, used nine different characters, so I expect the solution to be 31. And now let's plug this new source code, encrypted and encrypted, encrypt it again and then put it in the solution and 31. With just 15 and 782 characters uh, of crazy stuff. No, well. Now, this is more or less similar to Inception. Basically, you are in the reality in the interpreter, and then you accept something. And, it, uh, and inside accept, you also have, want to accept something. And actually, in Python 2, there is one more trick. And you need to accept something again inside the last exception, uh, ex uh, execution. And you actually get three right now, unfortunately. In uh, Python 3, you cannot use the last trick. And so it's just two. Very sad. Let's look at this solution. Now, these are the three steps. This is the solution that you can submit to Sposh. Don't do it. I mean, people get really upset if uh, other people get points uh, without really having worked it. So it's now that you have seen it, you cannot participate to this. Sorry. I should have advised you. And this is the solution. No comments. Yeah, yeah, I want I needed to use the the yeah. Does it finish? Yeah, okay. And this is the trick. This is the very, very small part that counts uh, and the whole machinery of translate, exec, translate, etc. Now, once you start your interpreter, the interpreter take this one, execute the translates first, and it builds this very nice other thing that starts again with exec. Okay. And when it goes to the exec, the uh, further level gets the they evaluate the, the sum, then the string, uh, collect the string, and then execute the code, which is this one. And finally, we went back to something that can solve the problem. Now, if you notice, there's no need to have, that there's nothing linked to this. So you can actually code with 31 characters of Python code, any algorithm, however complex, even with imports or whatever. So <coughs> I hope that I delivered on showing you the craziest and most obfuscated Python code you have ever seen. But, and I spent a lot of time. I mean, it took something like three months for doing all the steps. And in Python 2, there is even a more crazy additional step. So it's really crazy. And then at the end of this, you go back to the, <coughs> to the scoreboard again, and you notice this. In Perl, someone did solve the problem with six characters. <laughs> How? Six characters. And actually, Tim Peders, the Python expert, it's uh, with seven. <coughs> so, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the show. <laughs> I want to stress that we don't code like this uh, at my company, absolutely. I mean, uh, shooting of fans. Yeah. Any questions? No. Very funny. But the last one is a general solution. So you can solve every problem with 31. Uh, yes. So uh, There's no connection to the original problem. So this is the reason there are no other uh, other competition for this. In Pyth uh, at least for Python, you get, get any algorithm with that. And yet I was quite shocked because for a lot of the steps, you really, I spent a lot of time trying uh, to tweak 
very small things in the algorithm to get better and better and then, um, I mean, can get really crazy. And then at the final step, you can throw at it everything. I mean, even the initial solution works perfectly. Anyone else? Uh, hi. Uh, did you try it or uh, uh, do you know if it will be shorter with the Pyth language? I don't know if you know it. Which? Pyke. Pyth. There's a, there's a language called Pyth. It's Python without the O-N. Ah. And, and it's, uh, it was built specifically for code golfing and every operation is just a single character. They don't have it. Oh, they don't have it. Okay. No, looks like they don't. Okay, I was just wondering if you if you knew it or if you knew if if, you, if there could be a, this a shorter is, uh, solution with that. Python two stuff with twenty eight, but it's obvious to go from Python three to Python two. You, the the Python three solution works with Python two almost exactly. You can remove the the I don't remember. You can remove something because you don't need it, but and it it is a thirty. I think 29 characters long, but if you to shave the last characters is a nightmare. So. Yeah. Thank you for a great talk. Uh, how many years uh, did you spend for uh, programming contents? How many years? You mean uh, many years or when I started? No, no, I started. no. Yeah, when you started. Now, this actually, it's the first time I did uh, code golf seriously. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I saw this competition and the 32 ASCII, the, 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 the ASCII character intrigued me. I started studying it and I'm a nerd, so I <laughs> really got into it. And this is, but this is the only way. I, there's just another couple of competition of shortening competition, always on Sposh that I did. And another one, it's really great, but it's a long story as well. Uh, but I, for the competitions, I started probably in 2011, but the usual mark, code, code, uh, code gem, etc. but I'm not very good at it, so. <laughs> okay, yes, thank you. Other competitors, uh, strategy. So the fact that is that you cannot see the code. So uh, I really would love to see the solution from Halvard, the the first, because uh, in some comments in the in in the forum he said that he used one space at some point, and I don't. So it could be that he has a different strategy. But we complemented each other in the forum. And so it, it is possible it's very similar. I, mean, I cannot imagine, I cannot phantom how it could be different. <laughs> but I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, please, it's an exercise to the reader to, to do better. Please. Thanks, Alessandro. Thank you.